just what you guys have always wanted to know. If bourbon was Halloween candy, what kind of candy would it be? Find out next. Cheers, everybody. We are back. It's Bourbon on a Budget, and we're doing something different today. If you're tuned in, if you're watching, do us a favor. Hit the like button down below. That helps the channel tremendously. Uh, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do subscribe. We're pivoting on a few of the things that we're doing here on the channel and with the show. So we appreciate you for tuning in and appreciate you for hanging out. Uh, Pivot. Guys, we talked about it at the beginning, but we're doing a little... Uh, Little mashup here, a monster mashup, if you will. The monster mash. Oh, oh, oh man, that, that mash. unlike Dracula, that joke did not suck. Um, <laughs> that <laughs> oh, joke that wasn't very bad. mummy. Sort of funny. That was terrible. God, that was the worst of all three of them. <laughs> um, we are. We have a list of USA Today's top ten Halloween candy. We've made a couple of edits to it. But yeah, we do we even agree rolling? what that is? We, we we were struggling to find a bourbon that tasted like Sour Patch Kids. That that'd be a, that wouldn't be a great bourbon. So yeah, we are going to yep. tell you what bourbon would be Halloween candy. What Halloween candy would be bourbon? You excited for this, guys? Oh, I'm stoked! I love candy. I love bourbon. I love making pointless lists. So yes. Yes, yes, I am. Bourbon's Adam great, Boy. candy's average, but what? Sure, no. make a list. Okay. Well, let's get after it. Um, let's just start. Let's get let's get going on it. Uh, the first, okay, let's do this, mm, guys. Yes. What's your really quick? What's your what's your go to favorite Halloween candy? Anything, uh, anything Reese's for me. So peanut butter chocolate combo for both of us, I guess. You and Jeff Colhane. Um, yeah, so. Reese's is number one. We're gonna go with that. I like Butterfinger. I like Kit Kats. Mm, Kit Kats really good too. Big Kit Kat bites. Kit yeah. Kats are useless. It's a useless oh, candy. you're useless. What's your number one, Ben? Butterfinger. Butterfinger by far. Elite. I tried to get that added, and uh, Brendan was a big no. So um, yeah, Butterfinger. I hardly know. <laughs> Basically, her. we couldn't Whoa. find a whiskey. <laughs> That's too much. That's too much. Basically, right. we couldn't find a. Uh, a whiskey that could get stuck in your teeth for like six days. <laughs> <laughs> that was Ben's best joke in two years. All right. Reese's Pieces. Oh, no. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Not Reese's mm. Pieces. No, no. It's the same thing. No, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. What? Uh, Brendan, start us off. What is the bourbon that goes along with Reese's Peanut Butter Cups? Or what would Reese's Peanut Butter Cups be? So yeah. it needs to be a hefty, super like powerhouse one, right? Because... Reese's peanut butter cups, top of my list, top of a lot of people's list. It's excellent. So you need a really strong bourbon and it needs mm -hmm. to have both a rich decadence along with oh. obvious peanut butter. When you guys think of a bourbon that has a peanut vibe, what, what distillery are we thinking of? Anything from Jim Beam. <laughs> Anything yeah. from Jim the entire, Beam. The entire collab of them. But because we actually like Reese's Cups and it's not crap, we're not going to go with Old Tub. No, we will go towards the top of the line for Jim Beam, we will go with Booker's. Now, Booker's Ooh. is a semi-annual release. It is cast strength. Hello, so Book. mileage will vary like with every single release, but often going to have peanut, 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 peanutiness. Easy for you to say. Woo! That's careful over that one. And it's also going to have a lot of rich, I uh, could be interpreted as chocolate, a lot of dark, like sweet notes with it. So to me, it's a very good comp to Reese's Cups, and it mm -hmm. fills the top of that list as a powerhouse in the bourbon world. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, Completely agree. Jefferson, you good there? No, I think that makes a lot of sense. I had a uh, – I once had a Booker's that I got for a buddy, and we opened it together, and it was so, like, peanut brittle Ford that was, like, very much up his alley. It kind of was like – it's a lot of peanuts, a lot of peanuts in my mouth. And I was a little turned off. So, but yes, peanut butter cup, bookers, that freaking makes a lot of sense. Love it. Um, next up, Ben, you can take this one. Skittles. We talked yeah, about this, this one. Air. We talked about this before, a, but what do you think? It's a, a tough yeah, This one is a, uh, yeah, a little uh, off the beaten path. 
So when you're thinking whiskey, you don't think a whole lot of fruits, and certainly mm. not like banana Tropical fruits or yeah. grape cherry. Oh, yeah, cherry. Cher- grape. <laughs> Cherry's kind of a common one, Ben. For- nah, you know, whatever. But banana's kind of common too that he mentioned that. Like it's the whole brown forming line. <laughs> I need you to focus. You know, I don't get a lot of citrus when I'm drinking. <laughs> have you guys no, ever have you guys ever tasted caramel or brown sugar in a bourbon? It's crazy. You guys are dead to me. You guys are dead to me. <laughs> anyway, lime. You don't get a whole lot of lime. We do get lemon and lime. Lemon, yes. Lime, to be fair to Ben. <sighs> All right, sorry. Continue. I hate, I hate everything this is. Uh, <laughs> we have chosen barrel seagrass. Why? Okay. Why? Why? You may think to yourself, well, because uh, you take a, a typical whiskey and you put it in three different barrels, you got to get a lot of profiles out of it anyway. So this one's finished in Martinique rum, Madeira, and apricot brandy barrels. So we got apples, we got grapes, we got rum, which is a not a tropical sugar cane distillate, I think. <laughs> right? Yeah, it is an, a- an apricot gives you a weird kind of yeah, apricot, maybe some like yeah. apple notes. Orange-ish, yeah. Orange, apple Anyway, don't come to me on this one. This is this is a tough, this is a toughie. We we threw, threw those against the wall at the last second on this one. Skittles. So barrel <laughs> seagrass. If one of you guys have a better option. <laughs> No, no, I think you pretty much nailed there. that one. I think you nailed I think that's a perfect one. That was a dead lock. Dead yeah, lock for we, we be fair, This was not Ben's fault. This was on TJ for passing it to Ben because it was like the parent giving the five-year-old kid the keys to the car and expecting this was not, to not no, no, crash. No. If, if the car that you're talking about is freaking, you know, like a, a three-wheeled toboggan, that's, <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no good solution for a Skittles whiskey. Zero percent. Prove me wrong. Um, you nailed it. Um, yeah, prove me wrong, Brendan. When I when I say that you okay. nailed it, it reminds me of the guy in Happy Gilmore that shot the nail in his head. Um, so yeah. like that's how you nailed it. Okay, Everyone moving on. Is dumber Number three, M and M's. This one is perfect for me. M and M's are chocolatey, obviously sugary. Never heard of those in whiskey. Great around a campfire. Who doesn't Never love found any of that? Around a campfire. Say so melt in your hands, not by the campfire. Melt in your hand. Nah, never mind. Um, nineteen ten. Not in your camp. This is perfect. Nineteen ten. Super sweet. Super thick because of that second barrel. Toasty. Mm-hmm. Very sugary. M and M's are nineteen ten from Old Forester. Could like the best bottle on the lineup. Just to let you guys know. Um, you yeah. know what? All right, next up. Maybe. I don't think so. No, probably not. It's a pretty good lineup that we got here. Yeah, we do. Uh, all right, let's keep it moving. No disagreements there. Yeah. That was perfect. And so back to Ben for Star Wars, another fruit bomb. Oh, yeah, let's snake it. All right, <laughs> back to Ben. Screw you guys. <laughs> another one, another one that you see. You know, when I'm, when I'm drinking whiskey, I think Starburst, you know, banana Starburst. Perfect. Uh, how about this one? This is a little little uh, special option. <laughs> Think four roses, maybe mm. single barrel. All uh, right, you All know, right. four roses, single uh, barrel, that, barrel string. Say that then, right? Some of their uh, profiles, maybe a little more fruit forward, a little bit of fruity notes, cherry berries. How about that? How about that little uh, four roses action? We right. want to shout out Forrest, R.I.P. Forrest, for recommending that uh, for us. That was that was a no. Good I no. I think that that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, I agree, Ben. That was great. All right, we got through all. We, we've gotten through all the like <laughs> tropical, fake, artificial fruit ones, uh, and Ben's done all of it for us. Thank you, Ben. We're good. It's all it's all easy from here on out. Y'all want to repeat that? Go back. No, we're good. Repeat the line. Repeat um, the line. All right, Brendan, you're up. Number five. This one, not fruity, but also not chocolatey, like a lot of candies are. Uh, hot tamales. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I can't believe Hot Tamales is five on USA Today's list of the most popular. There are people that is a garbage hot tam- candy. That's a garbage candy. I don't like it. That's top five candies received because everyone wants to get rid of them. Get rid of them? Yeah, that's yeah. fair. No candy corn last night, just so, to let you know. Oh, that's probably for the best. I don't hate it, but there's no need to pass it out um, and inflict like that on people. That's fine. You would. Uh, so we had to el- eliminate it. People who haven't had Hot Tamales. It's just fake cinnamon, big red kind of flavor yes uh, that's all it is um yeah. we had to eliminate oh god i'm blanking on the name of the, the fireball oh crap i've only drank fireball like six or seven times in my life and i think i've thrown up every single time because i had oh, to be that's drunk why you're and... blanking on the name so you and... couldn't remember it <laughs> that's so why I'm, you're blanking the night that you want to forget every single time yeah. so we eliminated that because not really a bourbon it's not what we do here and that was also too easy to open up the world of of flavored whiskeys, which we didn't want to get into. So we had to pick a bourbon. I had to pick a mm-hmm. bourbon that was mm-hmm. super cinnamon forward and spicy, though that hit that hot tamale note. Uh, this is not a knock on this product because it's really good, but it does have this one super hot aggressive element and two, a lot of cinnamon in it as well. And that is Wild Turkey's Russell's Reserve Single Barrel. That is a 110 proof one. It drinks much hotter than 110. And that cinnamon spice is prominent mm. all the way throughout. So I thought that was a good comp mm. too. Hot tamales and the cinnamon. Cinnamon. It's, it's hot, spicy, cinnamony. That's a great pick, Brendan. I, I want to say. Nailed it. I think it's an okay pick. Yeah, the way that you've done your picks compared mm. to the way that Ben's done his, it's the difference in Snickers and eh, candy corn. So you're the Snickers in our ben. show. The clear candy corn. Got yeah, it. Right. I will. Okay. I will show you. I will tell you what the real hot tamale is. You are the okay. real hot tamale. I'll show you the hot tamale. What is it? If we're talking about hot, spicy, maybe cinnamon. You never know, but definitely hot and spicy. Check out. Oh, Jack Daniels, Coy Hill. That's a good pick. 143 proof. That's a good. Pick. That's a hot tamale if I ever see one in my life. Saw one. Red. Boom. Ready to ready to go. The Russell's That's Reserve tamale of hotness is also red, just for what it's worth. Doesn't doesn't count. That's okay. a good point. Yeah, Brendan still wins. Okay, next up, no zero. Probably my second favorite candy. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna drink this, and then I will tell you if it's hot tamale. Oh god, or not. Oh, god. Ben's like hit tamale. on his fourth pour of the night, and he's going with it is milk. pretty hot. <laughs> going with 160. Oh, right? uh, next up, Kit Kat. This is an interesting one. Flavor profile, the the nougat, the wafer that's in there, right? A little bit different, very creamy. This is a fun one. How about a mm. maker's private select for this one? Mm. Obviously, those can vary a ton, but a lot of them are very, very creamy. A little wafer action going in there. Remember, Sean's down there with uh, Southwest Florida Bourbon Society was a s'mores. Mm. Some of that mm. graham. Get some of that wafer action. Makers uh, private select for your Kit Kat number six. I don't like know. It. If you would have said Makers is maybe a Three Musketeer, a Milky Way, you know. Well, the Makers I'd be, can be, I'd be so, all on board. I'd the be Makers board. can be so different. Well, they're, that's true. All, I just I like Makers private select a lot, and I just dislike Kit Kats uh, the go, equal amount. Go rate some Starburst. Starburst. Uh, I I do like <laughs> that. Maybe Starburst. Have- the, and Skittles. <laughs> like a we garbage candy. Uh, we we should have left Sour Patch in there and given that to him too. <laughs> yeah, Sour Patch Kids. Uh, <laughs> Swedish like, Fish. Okay. <laughs> ah. Tastes like Swedish Fish in a glass. Um, warheads in a glass. <laughs> yes, uh, oh, like Jerry Warhead. Gosh. God, remember those throwback? I don't still make those, like do they? Everclear and yeah, Coy Hill. Yeah, they do. I got some last night. Um. I like that with the maker's mark there, TJ. So with the the Kit Kat, you have the wafer in there. So bready kind of, right? And that gets you the weededness of the makers. And most of those private selects have a good good level of, of chocolatiness to them. So that, that makes sense. Obviously, m- the milk chocolate for the Kit Kat's a little bit more bland. Uh, you're getting more depth with the... Uh, with the maker's mark, but you know, this isn't, this isn't a science here. I think, I think that's fine. Thank you. Um, you're, oh wait, we're snaking. Does that mean I go for again? Or how's it go? Just go. It, it's fine. Number seven, Hershey's Kisses. 
Hershey's Kisses on USA Today's board. Um, how about Woodford Double O? Just an absolute sweet, dense, heavy chocolate bomb. Um, I think that lines up fairly well. Uh, doesn't do anything fancy. Much like Hershey's Kisses, it is pure chocolate with no twists. Um, we did the Woodford Double Oak next to the 1910. And the biggest thing I remember, other than the 1910 being much better, was that the Woodford Double Oak was a lot more dense. Like, it was very heavy. And so, Chocolate Bomb is absolutely spot on there. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's, I mean, Woodford Double Oak's chocolate, 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 chocolate. And that's all a Hershey's Kiss is, right? So, I'm I'm with you there. And it's not like a super, like, dark, rich chocolate. Um, it's Shit, Woodford Double Oak's chocolate. more just, just nice friendly, easy go in chocolate. So I like that. Mm. You guys don't laugh at this next one, but yeah. snicker you can. Oh, geez. Oh, oh boy. Here. Brendan, wow. all you. No. Oh, thanks for setting me up with that one. It was great. I You're appreciate welcome. it. So I, so Snickers has the caramel, has the peanut butter, or has the peanuts, excuse me, has actual peanuts in it. So we needed something that had chocolate. We needed something that had peanuts, and we need something that had a little caramel as well. So you talking about you know some pretty diverse flavor profiles there. And I already kind of burnt up the Jim Beam uh, profile with the Reese's Cup. So mm -hmm. uh, I had to dig deep here. I went into our archives on Bourbon on a Budget. I found an old review of Old Ezra Seven. In that review, I had been saying that it smelled like salted peanuts it yes. tastes like chocolate it has caramel on the nose yes. and on the palate to yes. me that that sounds like a snickers uh i love old ezra seven it's extremely underrated i think it was overrated for a while and now it's now it's probably back to being underrated just depending on availability and price uh and i think snickers is also kind of underrated people just think they can get it mm -hmm. anytime they want but you know what one day snickers won't be there and you're gonna miss it and it's like old ezra seven it's going to be in the vault, and you're going to be like, why is it in the ABC vault? That makes no sense. So can I give a hot take real quick? I'm going to. Okay. No. I think Snickers are overrated. No. 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 Are you I, kidding I think me? they're underrated because – What are you talking about? It is the candy bar for adults. I think everyone likes Snickers. How is it underrated? I don't think everyone kids like likes Snickers. Snickers. I think you grow into it, and you're like, you know what? This is Yeah, that's an adult. Snickers yeah, is basically awesome. half candy, half protein bar. Yeah. If you were going to marry a protein bar and a candy bar – you would get a Snickers. And they'd make a baby. They would make love and they make a baby. They're not, they're they're just Snickers. okay. Snickers the baby is just is Snickers. okay. Butterfinger is so to much say better that than overrated. Snickers. That's a candy bar though. Snick uh, Butterfinger is a candy bar. Snickers. Butterfinger's a protein bar. bar. Wait, are you saying the Snickers is a whole protein bar? <laughs> are you saying the Snickers isn't a candy bar? He's saying it's like I'm, half candy bar, half protein. Um, half candy bar, half protein bar. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's you going on a long run? Grab a Snickers. <laughs> and, protein and, complete, and completely <laughs> negate everything you just did. Yeah, okay. Right. That's a protein bar, man. All right, let's pop on over to number nine. Ben, you've got it. Dang it. Tootsie Pop. <laughs> Tootsie Pop. Uh, ben loves Gosh. flavor candy. I think that's the only this thing This is a good one. I think this is a good one. No, I hate I hate all of them. Okay. Uh, we can leave I'm not sure time. Hoot chose this one. I like this, especially Tootsie for Pop. a, especially for Owl. like the red one. Tootsie Pop, are you kidding me? That was great. Oh, uh, how many thank licks you. does it take? One. Yes, a two, thank you. A three. That was That's good. Owl. Thank you. Just okay. <laughs> That's a really deep cut on yeah. the Tootsie the best, Pop. Lore. You know what, guys? The best jokes are the ones you have to explain. I exactly. Totally no out. joke. No joke. Okay, that was a joke. So, if we're gonna do. I, I'm not even sure what this one was chosen. This is not this is not not my me choice. All right, you know what? You, you, you had your, yeah. You know what, Ben? You're sure. You had your choice to look over your chance to look over all of these. You chose not How to. How do you do a Tootsie you... Pop? I so, got I got one better. I got one better. I got you. Right. Hold on. All right, Wait, my, you, you go to your you you choose right. you and I'll I'll choose mine. So uh, my nomination was something that was going to have to be very fruit forward and chocolatey. So. You can get cherry and chocolate, but yes. you know because the Tootsie Pop has multiple different flavors, I wanted something that had like different layers of fruit to it. Difficult to find uh, with the chocolate element as well. This isn't quite apples to apples, but uh, I went with Midwinter's Night Dram because I love with, the pick. 
I do love you? Pick. I All right. Pick is not why do, good. Why do you I love gotta, my I pick? Gotta pick? Well, I because I do think that you're right on the chocolate. I also love the depth of like the the grapey, plummy uh, midwinters. You know, I was actually just looking at my win- midwinters nine because it, you know, the 10 has come out again. And I was like, man, I need to pull that out the next time it gets a little cool. I'm going to make a pour a uh, Blake Karen of it. But the plummy, the grapey goes really, really well with the uh, like the red or the blue uh, Tootsie Pops. I think that's a good pick. So anyway, I like it, Brendan. Go ahead, Ben. What do you? What I do you, think you I with? think the only Tootsie Pop worth eating is the cherry one, right? And so to me, I'm thinking cherry and chocolate, which has got to be Stag Junior, baby. That is that is. And that is good if you're going for cherry and chocolate. Yeah. Uh, that that's, that's and that's, if that's you perfect. dip and if you dip your tootsie pop in fire, right? And that's anyway. how it goes. You know, this is like half half tamale, half tootsie pop. Ooh. So that's, that's my choice. I think that's, I think that's a good choice. Tamale. Okay. Pop. All right, Brendan, you want to finish this off today? Yeah. So number ten is the most polarizing of all Halloween candy, maybe it of is. all candy in the entire world, and that is candy corn. Uh, there's not much in between there. You either love candy corn or you hate it. Although I'm kind of in between. I, I understand. That. <laughs> that a lot of life, but I, I think that's a rarity to be kind of nuanced with candy corn. Of course you are. Uh, so I'm picking a whiskey. I don't think this, this is a corn whiskey technically, which is going to be fitting because it is candy corn and one that is mm-hmm. polarizing in itself. Some people think this is an amazing value. At like no, no, Who, no one thinks this is an amazing value. The noes no. do. I think, I think Jen Noe Ooh, thinks this is an right, amazing no, no. value. Um, so at least one person does, no. uh, but a lot of people think this is kind of poopy and no way. <laughs> we are going with mellow corn. It is uh, just quintessential corn whiskey. It's a bottle and bond corn whiskey at, uh, I think like 20 bucks or so it is corn, ethanol, buttery popcorn. That's harsh and not super delicious. And I think it kind of fits in line with what candy corn is again. Uh, mm-hmm. it, candy corn is kind of harsh. You're going to be a fan of that waxy, weird depth that that's there uh, with with a lot of sweetness, but not necessarily like layered. Um, no, if you like a trash candy, then you'll love this. Also, equally trash. Yeah, corn that's a great candy. way to put it too. No, that's there why I think, I think mellow corn is a great. This is the yeah. one that's the most spot on to me. Okay, I got two honorable mentions. Okay. And then if you guys want to go with anything else, you can, and then we'll get out of here. But sure. um, not necessarily a candy, but mm-hmm. uh, caramel apple kind of goes with Halloween. That's Buffalo okay. Trace. Buffalo, Buffalo Trace. Trace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Buffalo yeah, yeah. Trace. Um, and then a s'mores. Uh, that's Michter's Toasted Barrel Bourbon. Uh, Ooh, not, there you go. So, you know, again, you're not passing out s'mores. I, I do remember being a kid and getting – Caramel apples. Um, I don't think they do that much anymore. They would give you a caramel. Like you go knock on the door, they'd just hand you a caramel apple. Yeah, like they'd have it wrapped up in stuff, and they'd have a tray of them and stuff. That's where razor blades are. TJ, that's where razor blades are. That's not a real needles. Needles and razor blades. That's back in the nineties. Yeah, back in the nineties when we were trick or treating, like people weren't so scared of every single thing. Like we knew our neighbors and stuff. Like yeah, they made that stuff. Now that would never happen. Um, but you know, and nobody's handing out s'mores. Nobody's handing out caramel. But a s'mores would be the mixers toasted barrel bourbon. I thought about those today. I know they're not direct candies, but I do think you kind of think about them with Halloween. I thought that they fit well enough here. You guys may hate those, uh, but th- that's what I thought. You guys have anything else that anything you know you want to throw in? Uh, uh, one that we didn't get to because there was nothing like vanilla Ford, but Michter's uh, U.S. American. I don't know, is it U.S. American? Just American? Oh, yeah. The American whiskey is just just such a vanilla Ford whiskey. I guess maybe like if you had the, the Hershey's cookies and cream, because it's got that creaminess to it and a little bit of chocolate as well. That's white uh, chocolate. That is a know. garbage candy. Oh my gosh. No, it's not. Cookies and cream, not- Hershey's bar. Oh, I hate that it's one. It's delicious. I, that's it's not like a trash Oreos candy. That's a good candy. You're that's not a good candy. candy. We talked about this before. Ben. I would trade that. On. All right, Ben. Well, tell us about some fruit forward bourbons and we'll get out of here. There is no fruit forward bourbons that are also candies. Well, why did you volunteer to pick every single one of them on I this hate list? you guys. Y'all are dead to me. All right, wrap it up. Like to me. Okay, uh, one more. Do you guys? Yes. Okay, before I say this, do you guys like black licorice or no? No, no one likes Gross. black licorice. I like black licorice. I love it. No, it's got none of it last night. Stinks because I would have taken it all. But um, 
maybe black licorice would kind of give you a high west double rye vibe you know the, the herbaliness the spice a little different a little, a little anise in your mouth. Yeah, I get love, that. <laughs> love when you – I'm glad that's at the end of the video. Okay, make sure you're subscribed if you watched, if you hung out, if you if you liked the content, um, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, hit the like button anyway. It'll recommend this to other people, and they'll have to sit through it as well. So either way, you can either like us or hate us, but hit the, hit the thumbs up. Uh, for myself, TJ Pittenger, his self, Ben Cock, and – Yes, myself. Self. Brennan Sinone. Uh, hope you had a good Halloween. If you didn't, go drink some bourbon. Cheers. Cheers.